JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for December the 1st. I am Harald Lambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into, into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded higher against uh, the majority of the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian session on Tuesday. It slightly underperformed uh, only versus uh, GBP, CAT and Kiwi, while it gained the most against the SEC, the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc. The strengthening of the US dollar suggests that uh, markets traded in a risk-off fashion for uh, most of the day. However, the weakening of the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc points uh, otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, major EU and US indices uh, finished their trading in negative waters, perhaps due to end-month uh, portfolio rebalancing. Nonetheless, Asian indices were in the green, perhaps due to China's uh, Kaijin manufacturing PMI rising to 54.9 from 53.6, beating estimates of a downtick to 53.5. This is the fastest expansion in factory activity in more than uh, three years and following the latest upbeat developments over a potential coronavirus vaccine, it may have increased hopes of a, of a swift economic recovery around the globe in 2021. Overnight, we also had an RBA monetary policy decision with officials standing pat and repeating that they are prepared to do more if necessary. As we noted yesterday, with Governor Lowe noting uh, last time that the negative uh, rate is extremely unlikely, we believe that if any new easing is needed, this will come in the form of QE expansion. That said, with the bank noting that the Australian economic recovery is underway and that recent data have generally been better than expected, we don't see the case for further action anytime soon. For now, was the traders are likely to keep their gaze locked on developments surrounding the broader market sentiment. On that front, we stick to our guns that the positive vaccine, uh, vaccine headlines combined with the Joe Biden presidency in the US may keep investors' morale and thereby the risk-linked Aussie supported. As uh, for today, market participants are likely to pay extra attention to the testimony of Fed Chair Jerome Powell and Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin before the Senate Banking Committee. Tomorrow, the two officials will appear before the House of uh, Financial Services Committee. They will testify on the CARES Act, under which Congress made uh, 2 trillion US dollars available to the Treasury as a coronavirus aid, a large uh, portion of which was aimed to support the FOMC's lending programs. Less than a couple of weeks ago, Mnuchin cut off uh, the programs requesting the Fed to return unused funds and declined any extension. So with all that in mind, it will be interesting to see what the two officials have to say on the matter and whether Powell will hint at other ways in stimulating the US economy from a monetary policy front. The US government has yet to agree, or to agree with Congress on uh, a new fiscal package, something that makes the case for the Fed to act in December more likely. Thus, if Powell adds uh, more fuel uh, to that view, the US dollar and other safe havens could come under selling pressure, while riskier assets like equities may drift north. Now, as for the rest of today's events, today oil traders were expecting to learn the outcome from the OPEC Plus meeting. However, the group has, de has decided to delay talks until Thursday, according to sources, as members still disagree on whether they should increase output or extend uh, the existing cuts. The group had uh, been expected to increase oil production by 2 million barrels per day from uh, January, 
but according to media charter uh, it is now expected to delay those plans for at least uh, three months so what does this mean uh, for oil prices given that this is uh, the current consensus a three-month extension is unlikely to rock the boat and thus we don't expect any major market reaction now in case the extension is six months or more oil prices are likely to gain while in case we do get uh, an output increase, we may see an extension, an extension of yesterday's uh, setback. As for the data from the Eurozone, we get the preliminary inflation data for November. The headline CPI rate is forecast to have ticked up to minus 0.2% year over year from minus, uh, 0. Um, from minus 0.3%, while the HICP excluding energy and footprint is expected to have stayed unchanged at uh, 0.4%. At its uh, latest meeting, the ECB, uh, the ECB noted that in December the new macroeconomic projections will allow a thorough, as a thorough reassessment of uh, the economic outlook and that the governing council will recalibrate its instruments as appropriate. In other words, the ECB, the ECB is very likely to, ex to expand its uh, stimulative efforts at the upcoming gathering and subdued inflation metrics will only add to that likelihood. Later in the day, Canada's GDP data for September and uh, the third quarter are due to be released. Following a tumble to minus 38.7%, the quarter-over-quarter -quarter annualized rate is forecast to have rebounded to 47%, uh, though the month-over-month -month rate for September is anticipated to have slid to 0.9% from 1.2%. At its latest meeting, the Bank of Canada kept interest rates unchanged and scaled back its QE program, noting that the economic outlook, ha the economic outlook has evolved largely as anticipated in the July monetary policy report. Thus, following the acceleration in Canada's CPIs for October, a small slide in December's GDP and a relatively decent employment report for November due out on Friday are unlikely to raise speculation for Bank of Canada officials uh, reversing their decision at the upcoming gathering, namely expanding their QE purchases. In the US, uh, the most important data released on the agenda may be the ISM manufacturing PMI for November, which is expected to have slipped to 57.9 from 59.3. Now, with regards to the speakers, apart from Powell and uh, Mnuchin, we will also get to hear from San Francisco Fed President Mary Daly and Chicago Fed President Charles Evans. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.